Expert Factory is now open for business. Sound the whistle. Hey everybody, welcome to the Expert Factory. I am Jim, the podcast Sherpa. Some of you may know me from a little podcast called Too Many Podcasts. It is, it's very little, it's very tiny, and it's usually coming to you from the top of Mount Podcastia in the Sherpa Chalet. Today, I am in the corporate headquarters of the Expert Factory, and this is where we do our podcast. It's a podcast designed to make everything in life just a little bit easier. How do we do that? We bring in experts. And I have a great expert for you today. Not too long ago, on the January 1st, 2020 episode of Too Many Podcasts, I interviewed a lady named Kathy McEwen, and she hosts a podcast called Organize for Success. I strongly advise you to check it out if you really want to get your life in order. Kathy is a certified professional organizer who also has her own company called A Second Set of Hands, as well as her podcast, organize for success. She was gracious enough to loan me one of her episodes to play on my show, just to give you an idea on what you can do. Kathy is incredible with what she does in her podcast. Everything she explains to you is very simple, not expensive, just breaks it down nice and easy for you to follow. Kathy was kind enough to loan me an episode of her podcast that had to do with organizing your closets and your clothes, which I know a lot of us have to deal with doing that, and it gets to be a little bit much sometimes, but I like her methods. So before we get into her episode, I just wanted to let you know that today's podcast is being brought to you by Audible, and you can get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash Sherpa. And there's over 180,000 titles that you can choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. We've got one more commercial for you, and then let's check out Kathy's episode of Organize for Success and how to organize your closets and your clothes. Hi there, I'm Kathy McEwen. I'm your host of the Organize for Success podcast, and today we are talking about clothes and closets, shoes, purses, and so let's get started. Do you ever open your closet and think, I have nothing to wear, I can't find anything, I have absolutely nothing to wear, even though there is a, no shortage of clothing, you know, shoes, accessories, or do you ever go to your closet and yikes, it is such a mess and you don't know where to find what you're looking for? It is easy for us to let our bedroom closets get out of control and fill to the point of bursting. When our closet is unorganized and cluttered, we tend to always reach for the same clothes week in and week out and feel like we never have anything to wear. Did you know that most of us wear the same 20% of our clothing all the time and not wear the remaining 80%? This actually is quite common with many people because we tend to wear our favorite clothes a lot, which is the 20% we tend to grab. There is an exception to the rule though, and that is when people have a hard time keeping up with their laundry. In that case, they end up wearing a lot of clothes and it's because they're not doing their laundry on a regular basis, so they just keep grabbing more and more clothes and their laundry baskets are getting full and full. So the laundry is really piling up. And in that case, they're probably wearing more than their 20% of their clothes because they're not doing their laundry as often as they should. Okay, so let's dive right into organizing clothes and closet tips. The tips I'm going to be covering are actually simple and budget-friendly ideas that will help to keep you organized. Okay, let's start with number one. Play dress up and keep only what you really need. So take some time to play dress up in your own closet and don't worry, you don't have to do it all in one day. Schedule time in your calendar. I don't know, maybe every Sunday morning for a couple of hours, whatever you wanna do, but take time and try on every item well, almost every item, including all your accessories, your shoes, your belt, scarves, jewelry, etc. If it fits and you love it, 
either hang it back up or fold it and put it away. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what? I have to try on every item. Well, if you wear some items regularly, then no, you do not have to try them on. So don't feel like you have to try on every single item. Those ones you wear all the time, those are the ones you tend to love and wear. So no, you don't have to wear them and try them on because we already know you love them. So that's okay. You don't have to try those ones on. But there is some I'm sure that you have that you've not used for quite a while. And in that case, I would try them on and just give that one more try to see if you really love it, if it's really something you're going to wear, uh, or is it out of style? Does it have a rip? Does it have a stain? And decide whether you really, really want it. Anything that doesn't fit or that you don't love, I would place in a donation bag and move on to the next item. So have your donation bag right there. Try it on. Love it. Keep it. Don't love it. Let it go. If you love an item, but it needs repairs or alternation, then I would suggest putting that into another bag, a different color, so you don't get them mixed up, but a different bag and arrange to take it to the tailor or seamstress. And when you're finished, you, you, you've tried everything on and you've just made your decision and what you're keeping and you're stopping for the day, then put your donation bags and your repair bags in your car right away so that they're out of your closet and you don't have to forget to drop them off. So this is going to create space for you. And if you put them in your car right away, you'll tend, you'll be more likely to drop them off. I would even do it that day. If you can just take them and drop them off to the donation place and to the seamstress if you need to, or dry cleaning. That's another option as well that you might have clothes that you just want to have dry cleaned. Then that could be part of your day as well. Okay. So once again, when you're going through your items, really think about whether you need the item or not. What would be the worst thing that could happen if you let it go? Could you wear something else in its place? Chances are you probably could. Okay, so that is tip number one. Play dress up, but just keep what you really want. Okay, number two would be move out of se move uh, your season clothes out of your closet. So if you're lacking space in your closet, remove out of season items to instantly declutter the space and create more space. Under the bed storage bins are super, super handy. I find them, I love them, they're handy. You can get them at, you know, most box stores like Canadian Tire, Walmart, and other stores as well. If you have luggage that you're not using, uh, maybe you just don't travel very often, then you could always store some of your clothes in your luggage if you want, as long as you uh, remember that you need to bring it back in when the season's out. So that's the trick when it comes to um, storing things away. So... Another option is under the bed storage. It's another way of having that out of sight storage space for those items. And you can use storage bins for under the bed. You can also use storage bags that are under the, that go under the bed. And you can use them for clothes, shoes, you can even put your purses in them. But one thing I, I kind of quickly just mentioned earlier is that you have to make sure to remember that they're there and also I would recommend that you get good quality ones I have bought those bag ones before and they ripped so I now know that it's better to invest in a better quality bag that goes under your bed for storage because sometimes you get those cheap ones you know the dollar stores they can rip I at least that's my experience you may have had better luck for for me, the cheaper ones have ripped. When I just go to pull them out, they start to rip. So uh, I recommend just spending a little bit extra money and getting a better quality one. And then, like I mentioned, try not to forget they're in there. So I would not put anything in there that you use on a regular basis um, because you may forget about them under there. Sometimes people do out of sight, out of mind, and they'll forget. So if you're thinking of storing shoes that you just don't wear very often under there, if you still don't wear them and you haven't pulled them out for a year or so, then you know it's time to let those ones go. And I do find people tend to forget. So they'll be like, 
they can't find that favorite purse that they have, but they haven't used for a long time because they stored it under the bed, for example, well, then they'll forget about it. So I would suggest if you can just store the stuff under the bed that you use on a regular basis that sorry that you don't use on a regular basis, like those out of season clothes that you're not going to pull out for a few months because it's out of season. Okay, so that is the hat number two, which was uh, move the out of season clothes. Now, also, um, another suggestion is if you like to have the under the bed storage, is you can actually buy beds now that have under the bed storage built right in. So if you're in the uh, right now thinking about buying a bed and you're thinking of purchasing one, purchasing one, you may want to think about one that has under the bed storage because I find them super, super handy. Not that you should go out and buy a bed for the under bed storage, but if you are looking for a bed and you're thinking of purchasing one in the near future, then you may want to start thinking about getting one that has under the bed storage. If you don't have a separate area for out of season clothes and you have to keep it in your closet, then that's fine. We suggest that you put those items kind of to the side, maybe at the end of the closet so they don't get mixed up with your current season's clothes. So as long as you're separating winter from summer clothes, for example, if you live where I do or it's freezing cold in the winter, we need whirly sweaters and then it's really warm in the summer, those clothes, if you separate them, uh, then it's a little easier. So if you have to keep it in your closet, by all means do so, but try to separate them so you're not digging through all of the clothes. You're just digging through the clothes that you need for that season. Okay, so that's number two. Number three is sort by category and color. And we hate to state the obvious, but doing this will go a long way to making your closet an organized space. Hang your dresses together, your pants together, your shirts together, etc. It will save time each day and will make it so much easier to find your favorite shirt or jeans or pants, etc. If you want to take it up a level, then organize each type of clothing by color within its category. Now, what I usually do is when we're working with clients, um, or at least my staff does, we often hang things short on the left, and then as they get longer, it goes more to the right. So, for example, sleeveless shirts that are, you know, shorter, they'll be in the front of the closet on the the uh, left hand side and then the dresses we tend to put on the right hand side because it's longer so we kind of go from short to longer and uh, the other thing too is that we sort by category so we will put like all sleeveless shirts together or sleeveless blouses together um, then we would go into short sleeve blouses and then long sleeve blouses and then the dresses but we keep those categories together and then in each category, what you can do is you can sort by color. So what we tend to do is we tend to start with white at the beginning and then I have black at the end. And then the colors are usually in between. And now some people, you may wanna have the rainbow color and in that category, you could do that. Like those, say you're doing, I don't know, like just say for example, we're doing long sleeve shirts then you know you might have your white blouses at the beginning and then you might have your colored in the middle and some people it doesn't matter to them what colors in what order other people want the rainbow effect which is fine it really depends on what you're looking for and what you want to do and if it's overwhelming for you to do it that way then i wouldn't even worry about it just have them in the same category and try to have them in the same color which helps you don't necessarily have to have it a certain color every single time in an order um, it really depends on what's best for you and you don't want to be too stressed about it. So whatever you think is best. Okay, so the other thing I was going to mention is that when you have clothes sorted by color, it's actually really good because you get the idea of how many you have of that color. So for example, I have a lot of black tops. I wear a lot of black. Not as much in the summer, but I definitely do in the fall, winter, and spring. So I tend to wear black a lot. I have a lot of black shirts. So let's say, for example, my short sleeve black shirts, they would be all together. And this way I can see how many I have. And then I know that I do not need to go out and buy another black shirt. So the same thing for you. If you put your clothes in by category and then by color, you're going to see how many you have per color. 
and then you'll be able to decide whether or not you need to go out and buy more. And you may say, hey, you know what? I didn't realize it, but I now have eight green shirts. So I don't need to buy another one, which is going to save you money in the long run. So having an organized closet will save you money because you will be able to find what you need and not have to go out and buy another one. And you'll also be able to see how much you have. Okay. So what else can we talk about when it comes to sorting and color? I think that I have pretty well summed that up. And before we go on to the next tip, I just wanted to quickly mention that if you need help with organizing your home, there are many ways that we can actually help you if you're interested. So if you're local, you can reach out to me and we can chat about your organizing struggles and goals. And if you're interested, we will schedule a time for our organizers to come to your home and help you get your home organized. So that's if you're local. If you're not local, not to worry. And when I say local, we're in actually Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. If you're not local, not to worry because I personally work with clients all over the place and who are not local and we, um, we chat by Zoom or whatever we can so that uh, we're still able to communicate and see each other and I can see what you're working on. And um, I actually have a new program coming out in January 2020. And I'm super excited about that one. That program is for those who want more of the coaching style approach where you can chat with me and I will provide the tips and suggestions that you need to have an organized home. In this program, I give you the tools and systems so you can do the work yourself. We connect regularly though, so that I can see how you're doing and then you are free to ask me questions along the way. And with this program, we dig deep, like we really dig deep to see why you're struggling to stay organized or why you're struggling to be organized and how to get organized. And then of course, how to maintain that order. So it's really about simplifying your life and creating less stress. And I promise you, you will feel amazing when you have a more organized home and simplified life. And that is the new program that's starting in 2020 for those that are not local. Okay, and also I just wanted to quickly mention that there's another program that's coming up and I'm super excited about it. It's also coming in January 2020 and that is for professional organizers who would like help getting their businesses to the next level. So if you want more clients, you want to bring in more revenue, you want to learn more about what mistakes not to do, then this program is perfect for you. And so that's super exciting. That's two new programs that are coming up January 2020. It's going to be a great year. If you would like more information on any of those programs or other organizing sessions that we provide, please feel free to reach out to me via our contact form on our website. And I will share a link to that in the show notes. Or you could just hop on to kathymcewan.com or secondsetofhands.ca and go to our contact page and um, fill out the form. And I would I personally will get back to you, I promise. Okay, so let's get back to the organizing closet tips. So number four is turn your hangers around. Okay, so you may have heard this before, but if you've put in all the work to sort through your clothing and you kept things you love, now let's make sure you wear them. So turn all your clothes hangers backwards and after you wear an item and you can hang it back up the right way. So you just keep it backwards until you actually wear it. And then once you've worn it, you can put it back um, the regular way. And uh, try to make yourself select clothes each day from a hanger that hasn't been turned around yet. So if it hasn't been turned around, maybe try it and see if you like it. After some time has passed, I usually recommend like in Canada where we are 12 months because of our seasons. Um, if your seasons are very similar, like maybe you you know, you're in a warm climate and you wear the same clothes every season, then you may want to, after six months, let something go that you haven't worn. But for us, I usually recommend a year. If you haven't worn it in a season that just passed over the year, then it's a good chance you're probably not going to wear it next season as well. So if you, by, by turning the clothes hangers around, you're going to be able to see which items you have worn in the last year. Now, personally, do I do this? No, I don't. I, I don't. But the reason why I don't is because I already know what I wear. I know what I don't wear. When I walk into my closet, I can tell you, I can tell right away which ones I tend to wear and which ones I don't. And so I don't really have to do that. But it does work for some people. And if um, 
like some people will say to me, oh, I wear that, or I, they think they wear it, but they don't realize how long it's been since they've worn it. And if that's you, then this trick will work for you. So give it a try. And that's turning your hangers around. Okay, number five. We're going to now chat about shoes, purses, and etc. accessories. So these items are sometimes the hardest to store, but they are some great available options out there that can make it a breeze. So storing shoes is not always easy in purses and accessories, but like I said, there are um, items that are out there that you can use that will make storing them much easier. There's so many ways to store shoes. In fact, so many that I actually wrote a blog on, an entire blog on that. And I will post um, in the show notes for that blog in case you want to go and see the pictures of the different items of storing shoes. Um, but basically, you can use like over the door hangers, you can use furniture pieces that are designed to store shoes. You can use like file boxes are really a cute way to store flat shoes like flip flops. And you can also have shelving in your closet that's dedicated to your shoes. And also another one option that you could use is shoe boxes. When organizing purses, I tend to sort by color as well and by size. And I like to put them on a shelf in a closet so that um, the client can easily grab it. And But there are other ways. You can use an over-the-door organizer if that's something you want to use. If you have a lot of purses though, lining them up by size and color really is the best and having it um, on a shelf in your closet. And that way it's really easy to grab and go because they're all lined up together by size and color. Now for higher end purses and shoes as well actually, you can use cloth um, bags or boxes to protect them. Um, that's what I would recommend because you just want to save them from getting any damage or dust. So using bags or boxes works really well. And if you want to organize belts and ties and scarves, you know, there's different ways you can do that as well. You can hang them from a door. You can um, hang them from a hook in your closet or from your closet rod. Um, necklaces as well. You can keep them from getting tangled by hanging them either in a jewelry armoire or a jewelry tree, which you can find actually jewelry trees in different stores like Bed Bath & Beyond and probably Walmart as well. Um, a jewelry organizer that's hanging is another option. So those ones you can definitely get on Amazon. I've seen them on Amazon. I actually have one. I love it. I hang it in my closet. It just It's just on a hanger. And on one side, there's pockets that I can put um, bracelets and things like that in. But on the other side, then I can hang uh, uh, necklaces and they just don't get tangled because they're hanging straight. That's more for costume jewelry though. Um, I don't know if I'd use it for really nice jewelry. I would probably recommend an armor for that really nice jewelry that you want to keep. Um, jewelry trays or armors work really well. And rings and earrings can also be stored in trays or in an armoire um, as well. Or they could be in, if it's cost, more costumey jewelry, then like I said, you could put them in the, the hanging um, jewelry organizer that I have because those pockets are perfect for rings uh, and earrings as well. So that was number five. Number six is having custom closets built in your closet. So having custom closets built can be make being organized so much easier. Closets can be tailored to your specific needs. There are many different companies that install co uh, custom closets and at varying prices. So I suggest that you do your research and find the best custom closet for you if that's something you want to do. Do your research because they definitely range from you know, California closets to Ikea closets, there's are going to be two different price points. Um, so you really can, you know, look at what your budget is and decide what works best for you. So I actually recently bought and installed a closet system from Home Depot, believe it or not. And I have a picture of that. It's just a picture of a part of my closet. And it's in a blog that I have, um, recently written up. So I'm going to share that in the show notes as well so that if you want you can hop on and see a quick picture of my 
part of my closet that's used with the Home Depot um, closet system. And I also, on that blog, I'm going to have pictures. They're going to actually be a before and after picture of a closet transformation that was designed by Natalie Cox from Natalie Cox Design and then CP and CPI Interiors. And uh, it's actually a really nice picture that it shows you what you can do with um, a custom closet in your closet. So it's actually a before and after pick on my blog. And I, like I said, I'll share th that in the show notes as well. And the last tip that I was just going to mention is if you want, number seven, you can let us help you. If you're struggling to get your closet and other areas of your home organized, reach out to me directly and we can chat about your goals like I mentioned earlier. Um, there'll be a link in the show notes and you can go to secondsetofhands.ca or kathymcuen.com and go to the contact form and we would love to help you. So if you're struggling, reach out for help, either us or it could be a family member or a friend, as long as you can get that help you need. And uh, if not, if you can do it on your own, then if you follow those tips that I just provided today, you will be able to have a better organized closet. Okay, so that's it for this episode. Please like and share, leave a review if, you, if you'd be so kind. It would mean the world to me. Until next time, folks, let's get organized. Thanks so much to Kathy McEwen for loaning us that episode of Organize for Success. I strongly recommend that podcast if you definitely want to get your life in order. And she's a huge help. She was also a wonderful guest. You can follow the show on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. In what was formerly the location for Too Many Podcasts. Now Too Many Podcasts and The Expert Factory will be together on sites called Sherpolution. That's S-H-E-R-P-A-L-U-T-I-O-N. And we will be having a Sherpolution.com website coming in the near future. You can subscribe to the show on any of your favorite podcast apps. And this way you'll always know when there's a new episode coming. And that will be every Thursday. If you want to check out Too Many Podcasts, that will be every Wednesday if you'd like to subscribe to that as well. And I'm hosting both of them. So if this voice gets to be a little too familiar, at least you'll understand why. Also, if you're an expert or you have a request for a show, you can email me at jimthepodcastsherpa at gmail.com. Next time, we will have a visit from Courtney Frazier, and she hosts the podcast The Courtney Show, and her episode will be about setting up an emergency fund. Definitely one of those things that you need to learn how to do, right? So until the meantime, oh, wait a minute, wait. I think there's going to be an announcement on the PA system. The podcast is now over. Please disperse. Viva la Sherpa Lucian!